welcome to the show. Today we have a special guest, Ms. Janice Bear from the Super Gamer Geek University. Thanks for having me. I understand you're working on a new book. Yes, it's called Why This Is The Last Console Generation. Now that's interesting. Why do you think this generation will be the last? If you look at game consoles of the past 20 plus years, you will notice that technologically they were very different from one another. But within the last 10 years this started to change. Now, you're starting to see the homogenization of the platforms. Despite their outward appearance, under the hood, the Sony PlayStation and Microsoft Xbox One are virtually identical machines. True, both use x86-based CPUs made by advanced micro devices. Technically, they use APUs, or what is often called a system on a chip. The processor and graphics processor are on the same silicon. There are small differences between the two APUs Sony and Microsoft use. For instance the PlayStation 4 has more graphics compute cores. True, also both consoles have 8GB of system memory. Though, the PS4 uses faster GDDR5, where the Xbox One uses DDR3. Still, these are just minor differences. So, please go into depth about why you think this is the last console generation. Certainly, as I said we're seeing the homogenization of the platforms. The upcoming project Scorpio for Microsoft, and Sony's project Neo will narrow this gap even more. How is that? Both console makers are rushing to embrace VR. Both also have been brutally criticized for not being able to deliver 60 frame per second 1080p HD performance. HD adoption wasn't very widespread yet when the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 launched. When the PS4 and Xbox One launched, adoption of HD TV had reached market saturation. The shutdown of standard definition TV broadcasts, the rise of Blu-ray, and dropping prices help HDTV adoption spread faster. Even now, a few years after the start of this console generation, there are still games that can't run at full 1080p, or even 60fps. That's right. Which is why Sony and Microsoft have taken so much flack from the gaming community. So, now both are upgrading their consoles early. 4K televisions are dropping in price, and their adoption is growing. Plus, the PC is getting virtual reality, and whether the fanboys like it or not the consoles are always in competition with PC. PCs have always been more powerful than game consoles, but the current generation systems narrowed the gap. However, recent advances in processor and graphics technology threatened to turn the gap into a valley. Sony and Microsoft had no choice but to upgrade their hardware early. But, that still doesn't explain how this is the last console generation. The answer is simple. Right now, television technology is going to be stuck at 4K. While we're getting 4K Blu-ray, cable TV services don't have the means to deliver 4K programming on a regular basis. Some can't even handle delivering full HD and most haven't been investing in the necessary upgrades to their infrastructures to handle 4K. So, while we've seen 8K TVs at CES, the means to deliver just 4K programming is very limited. There's no incentive to go beyond 4K in the market right now. Correct. 4K is going to stick around for a long time, which means the next great frontier is virtual reality. And. As we've seen with the PC, you need a lot of processing and graphics horsepower for VR. Horsepower the current generation consoles simply don't have. Which is why I believe this generation will be the last for consoles. Where can they go from there? Resolutions above 4K smack into the law of diminishing returns. That's because the human eye can only perceive so much detail, so higher resolutions won't make any difference. Television in 3D is dead. The lack of an open standard, limited viewing angles, and high prices for the glasses killed it. So, once the console makers upgrade the 4K and VR what incentive do they have to go above that? Not many, except maybe graphics quality. Yes. But that means smaller incremental upgrades. 
Sony and Microsoft will be very hard-pressed to convince consumers to invest $300 to $500 in new hardware that is only slightly better than the previous generation. Also, PCs of two to three more graphics card generations before they hit the law of diminishing returns. This is why Scorpio and Neo will be the last console generation. Upgrading further will require a radical technological leap. Such as hollow deck technology, or even direct neural link technology. Like those headsets in Sword Art Online. Exactly like Sword Art Online Nerve Gear, and that technology isn't too far off. Early prototypes can project simple blurry images into the brain, and we're seeing major advances in brain controls for robots and drones. So, if technology continues to advance at the rate it is now, then the matrix can be real in about 5 to 10 years. You'll need something more powerful than a game console to make that happen, though. It will require quantum computing. So, what this all boils down to, is that this generation will be the last of its kind. Scorpio and Neo will be the last game consoles that connect to a TV. And the lines between console and PC are becoming so blurred. Will you really be able to call future machines game consoles at all? When you put it that way, it does make sense. But, some will say this is all very far-fetched. It isn't though. There is a lot of money being invested in machine brain interfaces. That technological field is advancing rapidly. Which means, given enough time, it will get cheaper and eventually reach the hands of consumers. Basically, William Gibson's vision of the future is inevitable. William Gibson, he's the father of cyberpunk. That's right, the vision of the future he saw in his cyberpunk novels will become our reality in about a decade. The rapid advancement of technology in this direction makes it a certainty. Artificial intelligence and full immersive virtual experiences are going to transform our world. And, we're going to see it in our lifetime. Janice, it's been great talking to you today, but that's all the time we have for. Jake, I'm always happy to come on the show. Let's give a hand to our guest. You'll be back next week, because I understand you're also working on another book. Yes, it's about how Oculus and their recent business practices can harm the future of VR. I'm sure we'll all be looking forward to hearing from you about that subject. Before we go, I'd like to give a special shout out to Gamersby, the most successful gaming-focused social media community in the world. You'll find a link to the community on Google Plus in the video description below. Also, if you have questions for our mailbag episode you can submit them via the Twitter handle below using hashtag Chloe Mailbag. The best submission will get a zombies to robots heat change coffee mug from ThinkGeek. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time.